And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to open um, we're, we're going to open a wine that was recommended by one of our viewers about a month or two ago, and I did finally get around to going out to pick one up just to try it out. We're going to try it out tonight. It, this should be very interesting, very interesting indeed. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if I like it or if I don't, either way, but it should be fun. Also, we have uh, a lot of other things going on. I'm going to be showing you a video that my son Tommy Savoya did with his friend Nick Hernandez, uh, which is a cupcake cooking video. It's not that long, but it should be entertaining to say, to, to say the least. And uh, I will be jumping in the chat with everyone during that video, so I'll chat directly with you while the video is playing. I think we should find it all entertaining. Uh, also, we have the national days. We have some birthdays to toast and an anniversary, a spe uh, special anniversary uh, for a, a good friend of mine in the podcast space. So stick around. We're going to have some fun. If you're joining me for the first time, this is Drink with Rick. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I don't have it scripted. It's unscripted, unrehearsed, and uncorked. And I do have some show notes, but I don't always follow them. I really rely more on what we're doing in the chat, what we're saying and doing in the chat. This show is about the wine. It's not about me, but it's about the wine, but it's mostly about you and me getting together and just having a great time on a Saturday night, just just chatting and, and uh, just having some fun. That's all it's about, really. Anyway, if you're joining me for the first time, you can watch this show live. We're live on Facebook. Uh, we're live on the Facebook page, Drink with Rick. We're also live on uh, YouTube. I think we're live on YouTube. Yes, we are. We're live on YouTube at Drink with Rick. We're also live on Twitch. Twitch is Drink with Rick One. That's the Drink with Drink with Rick, the number one. So we're live there, and I see we're going there. Also on Periscope and Twitter. Uh, you can uh, go watch it on Twitter at Drink with Rick. We're also live on the website on my website at drinkwithrick.com. Now, uh, there is no chat going in the website per se, but if you click on the post for that live video, then uh, you'll see a comment box and you can put in a comment and I'll respond in kind. Also, you can contact me, Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. That's Rick at SavoyaMedia.com uh, about anything you want to talk about. And uh, of course, on Monday nights, this podcast version of this show goes out on Monday nights 10 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 p.m. Eastern every Monday night uh, at drinkwithrick.com and wherever you can find podcasts. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, TuneIn, and your an favorite Android device, Twi uh, let's see, uh, Stitcher, <laughs> Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, Deezer, and of course by email. You can just uh, email uh, Subscribe by email and you'll get the latest episode in your inbox as soon as it drops. Uh, we're working on getting on to um, Amazon. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, uh, Amazon uh, podcast, but we'll, we'll be getting there soon enough. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad everyone's here. Check in the chats. It's a little bit quiet in the chat so far, which is expected most of the time. It's pretty quiet the first uh, 20, 30 minutes, and then everybody starts uh, uh, you know, wandering into the chats, but we're going to have some fun here. I hope everybody joins in and tell, tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drinking. And if I can afford to buy a bottle of it, I'll see if I can try it and, and drink it too. I'll test it out. So this is what we have going on tonight. Let me show you what we have tonight. This is a black box wine. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a 2019. This is an interesting looking wine. Because, and this is the first time that I've ever opened a wine out of a box. I, I, I have bottles behind me, but uh, and, and as you can see behind me, I have all these bottles behind me. But this is the first time I've actually opened up a bottle of wine. Uh, well, it's not a bottle of wine. It's a box of wine. A wine out of a box. So this should be... Interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that just yet. I know they've been around for a long time. I haven't tried them before, but it was a suggestion from a viewer that we try it out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that tonight. Uh, this is what the 
back of the box looks like, and I'll read that a little bit, but we have some, we have printing on, on the sides too, so I'm going to take a look at that. Uh, in fact, let me, let me open up the side of the box first. The, on one side we have, um, let's see, what do we have here? Black Box Rewards. Join at blackboxrewards.com. So they have rewards. I wonder what those are. So this is Black Box Premium Wines, also available in three liter boxes. And uh, there's the Facebook. They have a Facebook uh, uh, page or group. The, uh, this is a, the one I have here is a 500 milliliter um, box, which is the equivalent of three glasses of wine, according to their, um, their information here. The back of the box is interesting, too. That has, um, let me read this. Black box wines. Oh, it's just uh, telling 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon. This is from Chile. From Chile, this is a Chilean wine, imported by Black Box Wines in Madera, California, <clears throat> packed by Black Box Wines in Lodi, California. There is 13% alcohol by volume in this 500 milliliter box of wine. Now let me show you the other side. There's one more side to this thing. There are four sides to this. And this is what the other side says. It says, exceptional quality wine in a mini pack. Award-winning black box wines, winner of 70 gold medals and 34 best buys from Wine Enthusiast magazine. Smart and convenient, three servings, perfect for any occasion, easy to open, resealable cap, unbreakable design goes where glass can't. It's also easy on the environment, Smaller carbon footprint than glass or plastic. Well, that's good to know. I, I guess they should be, uh, they, they really enjoy these wines in California, I suppose. I don't know. Um, because I know a lot of the, the regula rules and regulations about a lot of this, is, you know, they do a lot of that in California. Um, hmm. Interesting. Anyway, this is a, um, <clears throat> this is a, a 500 milliliter. Now, normally we have a 750 milliliter bottle of wine. This is 500 milliliters, so it's not a whole lot in this in this uh, thing. But three glasses, that should be enough for, for to get us through the stream tonight, right? I, I, I should think so. I should think so. It should be plenty. Uh, maybe. Depends on how we go with this show. So anyway, uh, that is what the wine looks like. We're going to um, try this wine here in just a few moments. Before we do that, let me get to the chat. Very quiet on on Facebook tonight. Interesting. Uh, a lot, a lot going on on YouTube. Ah, Twitch. Ah, that Square Guy's here. It's, oh, that Square Guy's. Great to see you. That Square Guy says, hey there, Rick. Sorry I haven't been around much lately. Not a problem. I know you've been busy. You've been busy. Uh, that Square Guy says, I hope you're doing amazingly. And I am, and I hope you are as well. That Square Guy does, um, he's on Twitch, and he uh, he does some gaming videos, but he also, the ones that I really enjoy, uh, and they, I think um, they've done cooking videos there too from time to time, I, I think. But um, they, uh, he, he does do some gaming videos, but the ones that I really enjoy watching are his um, live streams of uh, the, um, the bricks, the Legos. He puts together, he'll put together these Lego uh, models and everything. He'll put, do all the Legos and it. It's really fun to watch, but it's he's not just you know putting the bricks on and, and making something with them. He's also chatting with everybody and and uh, some great conversations. And I really enjoy watching those. Those are and you know what it's it's a nice change from all of the all of the uh, other videos on on Twitch. I should say a lot of game. I don't get so much into a lot of the gaming videos. I I don't really. I mean I've I've been. I've done the gaming thing years and years ago, way back in my early days, way back in the days of the Commodores and the Ataris and, you know, the, uh, the early Nintendos and things like that. And, and I, I've done my gaming time, but uh, so I really don't get too much into the gaming um, videos too much. I can do that a little bit, but it, it's not something that really gets to me. But uh, I, I go around, they, and they have a lot of other channels, too. You have the Just Chatting channels, and there's a lot of, uh, there's some interesting stuff there. A lot of stuff I, I really don't get into, but there are a couple of really cool things that I've watched um, on those channels 
uh, one of them is a game store that they do a live stream in their game store, and he's putting away games. And sometimes they'll do like live, uh, sort of QVC style, you know, sales on on it live, which is which is pretty interesting, pretty cool. Uh, it's given me some ideas for the future. Also uh, on uh, food and drink, food and drink, a lot of cooking videos, so a few drinking videos like mine, but a lot of cooking videos. And uh, that is that is something else that interests me. I do like that. Also, uh, they show some Bob Ross reruns. And, of course, I put that on my Twitch uh, channel when I'm not streaming because uh, I like watching some of the old Bob Ross uh, painting uh, videos. And that square guy says, I'm actually getting set up for another baking stream today. Oh, cool, cool. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to checking that out. He says, I'm... Um, <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> excuse me. It says, oh, I'm so glad you enjoy the Lego streams. That means a lot coming from you, Rick. No, I really do. I, I really do. It says, uh, I love doing the Lego streams, too. They're my favorite. I find it so relaxing. It looks relaxing. It really does. And he says, I know the game store one. That one is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've, I've watched that one quite a few times. And uh, he says, I would love to see you there. Um, you know, if I can get to the baking one, I'll try. I've got some editing to do on this uh, at after uh, night. Of course, it gets pretty late, so I don't know how late I can stay up tonight. But I'll see if I can catch some of that uh, afterwards. Um, also, if you're if you're going to stick around for a little bit, my son and his friend did a baking video, and I'm going to show that. It's it's only only about ten minutes long, but it's it's. I'm going to show that tonight during the stream because it's very entertaining. He, they, they had some fun with it. It was a little tongue-in-cheek. He says, no stress. If not, uh, I always love seeing you in the chat. Well, I really appreciate that. And he says, I'll be here until I, until I start my stream. Yeah, thank you. That Square Guy. Check out his, check out his uh, channel, it, that Square Guy on, on Twitch. Uh, let me get back to Facebook for a moment. Nothing going on on Facebook. So uh, we'll go ahead and... I'm trying to watch all these chat here, chats here, but I'm having to switch back and forth. So let's go ahead and open this bottle of black box wine. And this is a little unusual because I'm not used to opening wine from a... Oh, wow, it opened right up, didn't it? Well, I hope it was sealed good. <laughs> I hope so. It looks full. So uh, assuming that it was sealed pretty good. It did snap a little bit. So let's pour a little bit of this. This is a Cabernet. We'll try a little bit of it and see how it, how it goes. In the meantime, while it's uh, doing that, I'm going to find out a little more information about this wine. Uh, I looked around at uh, Total Wine. I looked around. I saw some information. I found quite a bit of information on the wine on online, but it, it was just a, a mixed bag, a mixed box of everything. <laughs> the Black Box Cabernet at the uh, Total Wine they sell the three liter version of this for $14.99. And uh, the three liter ones are the ones that I see a lot of online, but they do have uh, these little 500 milliliter ones. And I didn't see a 750 milliliter, supposedly they make one, but I didn't see a 750 milliliter uh, box or I would have probably purchased it. But um, I, I saw this one. It was either the 500 milliliter one or the three liter one. And there was no way I, yeah, I know you'd love to see this, but there's no way that I'm opening up a three-liter box of wine on this wine show and trying to drink that. Uh, <laughs> I'll say that for a party, if this wine's uh, any, as good as it uh, is supposed to be. We'll see. Uh, I checked on Wine Searcher, and uh, prices are kind of, uh, they're fairly consistent, actually. They range from $17. $19.99 all the way up to $25.98. Uh, in various stores and uh, all around the country and some other places around the world, I guess. So that's um, mostly around the country here. And it's usually for the three liter, the three liter. And they said seven, uh, 749 for the 750 milliliters seems about average. Uh, well, there's one for 525. Uh, but I'll be honest, I, I was looking for the receipt for this. I, I think I paid like three nine or two ninety eight for this this box. It was in a it was in a bin. It was in a uh, one of their carts. They had a, several shopping carts there full of wines that they had put on clearance. So they had put all these in in several baskets, and this was one of the ones that was on clearance. I got another one on clearance too. It's back back there, uh, and uh, maybe we'll open that up next week. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. But 
this box I think was 298 if I recall correctly so that's what I paid for this 500 milliliter box I'm gonna say box instead of bottle of wine so uh, let's see on Vina they've got uh, 2019 they don't really have a price for it they say it's starting around 699 so I guess that's that's what they say anyway I can I can get the aroma from the wine from here and I'm about uh, about eight inches away from this glass let's go ahead and take a whiff and see what we got here okay uh, this is a cab not surprising there's some a lot of red fruit in this wine mostly cherry is what I'm I'm getting there's a little bit of I think there's a little a little dark fruit in here too maybe uh, maybe a hint of blackberry too cherry and blackberry Hmm. We'll give it a taste. How about that? Okay. That's different. That's different. Definitely some cherry. And, um, and yeah, I, I think I got a little bit of blackberry in there. Let me try that again. Yeah, a mix of cherry and blackberry <clears throat> this is one I'm mostly getting. Maybe a little plum. I think I'm getting a little plum in this wine. It's it's um, it's kind of medium bodied. It's kind of a medium bodied wine. Let's see. <clears throat> Maybe I just didn't pour enough in the glass. Let me try another glass of it. Okay, it looks a little. Uh, it's still, I wouldn't call it full-bodied in these lines. Well, maybe it is, kind of medium to full-bodied. It's um, somewhat, it's it's not really smooth. It's not really tannic. It's somewhere in between. A little, there is some tannin in here. And it's dry. It's dry. It's not sweet. A uh, little, some, somewhat acidic. Somewhat acidic. <clears throat> It's a little bit acidic. It's I wouldn't say it's it's kind of medium. Um, it's not really light and it's not really too bold either. It's sort of sort of medium. I know I've seen some reviews before that said you know, it's kind of a bold wine, but it doesn't. Well, maybe maybe it's a little bit bolder now, but it's it's not the boldest wine I've had. I'd say it's it's kind of medium. I would say, in my opinion. But I can definitely taste a mixture of cherry and blackberry. Mm, a little bit of oak in it, and I think maybe just a, a hint of vanilla. I'm not sure. I'll have to try it out again in just a, a couple of minutes. Of course, we have some food to pair it with, too. And I almost forgot to show that to you. Tonight, we have to pair it with, we have some, um, what is this? This is corned beef. Corned beef, well, we had some of that. I, no, I don't know about the corned beef. We'll try that. Some burger, some some uh, hamburger or steak burger there. That should go pretty well with that cab. And we have some cheeses. We have cheddar and we have, uh, what do we have here? This is a, um, what is this? This is a, uh, uh, It's this is a, it looks like the brie. It's a brie. I don't know about the brie in this wine. Uh, the creamy go uh, Gouda, the Trader Joe's double cream Gouda. That should work. We'll try that out. And I, I'm pretty confident about that one since we haven't had a loser in all the wines we've tested with that, with that double cream Gouda. So we'll check that out and see how that works in just a moment. But first, let me check the chat one more time. Uh, Facebook is still quiet. And that square guy is here, and I'm glad you're here. He says, oh, I might need to catch that in the VOD. Um, thank you so much, Rick. Yeah, um, you know, I... Um, I don't know if you were here the last couple of week, uh, well, the last week, I should say, that uh, during the week, my son Tommy's birthday was uh, on the 29th, and we did a special one-hour wine stream where we opened up three bottles of wine, a, a white, a rosé, and a red, and he tried wine for the first time right here live on the stream. It was very interesting. His, his uh, reactions were very interesting. We had a great time, by the way. We had a big crowd, too. And then the next night, which was the 30th, which was International, Pod Fest, uh, International Podcast Day, um, we did it again, but with beers. We had three beers. We had, uh, actually, the three beers behind me. 
Um, it was, we had a, an ale, uh, an IPA, and we had a lager, uh, a, a, a Boston, uh, it was a Boston lager from uh, Sam, Samuel Adams. And then we had one that was a peanut butter and chocolate uh, porter. And he tried each of those. And uh, for the first time, because he never had beer before either. <laughs> he never tried it before. It was first tasting, and the reactions were, were uh, really entertaining. So we, we, had, uh, we had a good time for that. That was another special one-hour uh, wine stream. So if you get a chance, check those out, because they're online. They're, they're all on, online, so you can view them anytime. Also, on the podcast version. It's, it's better to watch the stream so you can see his reactions to it. And we had some fun uh, just talking, chatting back and forth during the stream. And with everyone in the chat. All right, so let's go ahead and pair this with some food. Uh, tonight I have, let's try it with first with the, let's try it first with this. This is the, wow, this is very tender. My wife made a, uh, and she did it in a pressure cooker. She made some um, corned beef and cabbage with some other vegetables in it. Purple and uh, what were that? Purple and yellow carrots as well. I thought that was really interesting. We're going to try it with this, though. The corn is a little cold now, but it's really, really good. <clears throat> mm. Great corned beef. Mm. Try it with this. I don't know about corned beef in the cab. We'll see. Mm. Let's try it out. Not bad, not bad, and it's an interesting. It's it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's an all right, all right pairing thing. I would pair this with a couple of other things first before the cab, but it's not it's not bad with the cab. It, it really isn't. Uh, let's try it with. Uh, I'll tell you what, clear the palate just a little bit, <clears throat> and then we'll uh, we'll try it with the burger. This should go pretty well with the burger. I I, I think. Uh, I would be surprised if it doesn't. And um, the wine's not bad. Not the best cab I've had, but it's not the worst either. I didn't really know what to expect in this box of wine. We'll see. So it's, it's pretty good with the, uh, the burger. Not too surprising. Once again, there are other caps that would pair with this, this one. For, there are actually other wines that pair with the, the meat first, but if I had a huge selection of wines to choose from, just pick my own wine, I would, I, there are a couple other wines I'd choose first, but it's okay. I mean, if the cab's what I have, it'd be, it'd be fine with the, with the burger. Uh, let's try it. I'm going to clear the palate again one more time, and then we'll try it. And check the chat one more time, just briefly. It looks uh, pretty quiet out here tonight. Uh, we'll try it with the brie. Uh, I'm not holding my breath. Well, maybe I should, because <laughs> um, I don't know about this with the brie. My wife put this together for me. I was wrote, she she uh, did an amazing job doing it. Although I don't know if the brie would have been my choice. Let's see. Let's try a little bit more. Mm, i get this cap on. Mm. Actually, actually, the breeze not too bad with this, really. Mm. Kind of rich. Makes the uh, cab don't go down a little more smoothly. This cab, I actually have to say this cab almost tastes a little watery. I wouldn't say watery, but just it's a little lighter than I would have expected from the cab. It's just a little on the lighter side. I don't know why that is, but um, it does seem a little bit on the lighter side. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but it's it's um, yeah, it does seem a, really on the light side. It doesn't really see that doesn't seem that bold. I'm surprised because I would have expected to be a, a lot bolder. And the uh, and, and there's not a lot of aftertaste. It goes down 
fairly easily, but it's uh, not. Um, it does almost taste a little watery. I wonder if this thing was open. They filled it with water. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. See, that's why I, I don't know if I can really wrap my head around a... I mean, it seemed to snap when I opened it. I don't think it was tampered with, but um, let's see. It does take a little watered down. And it doesn't seem as bold as it should be. I don't know. Maybe I should stop drinking it. <laughs> something, I don't know. Something about that cap. Let's try it with the uh, the cheddar. It should be okay with the cheddar, right? I'll try it with the, the cheddar. Mm. And, um, let's see. It's, um, doesn't it has some tears? It does have some tears? Still a little off. I mean, cheddar is okay with it, but it just seems a little off. I'll tell you what. Let's try it with the um, clear the palate one more time. We'll try it with the Trader Joe's uh, Gouda double cream Gouda. Let me check that thing in there. Yeah. yeah I think it it it, uh, it did it, I'm pretty sure it did did snap when it opened, but it's uh hmm. I don't know. Okay, uh double cream gouda. Let's try that and see how it goes. I don't know if I can really trust uh, a wine that's been sitting in the discontinued bin as a screw on cap. I don't know about that. It's, um, hmm. All right. Should I be drinking this? Should I really be drinking this? I mean, you know, it looks like wine. Um, but you never know these days. You just never know. Let me read this. Let me read the front of this thing again. Let me show you too. This is what we're drinking. Black Box Cabernet from Chile. This is from Chile and uh, 2019. Rich aromas of dark fruit complemented by a deep, lush body. The finish is soft and long with lingering notes of berry. I'll be honest. Um, I didn't, There's not much of a finish to this wine, to be honest. Hmm. It's a soft finish, to be sure. Very soft finish, but I wouldn't say it's a very long finish. And there is berry. I can taste the berry. Everything else, though, um, deep, lush body, I don't know. It doesn't seem that full body to me. It seems uh, seems a little light body to me. Almost like it's a little, uh, almost like it's a little watery. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure. I wonder if I should stop drinking this. I'm over, I'm over halfway down. Yeah, this is three glasses. Of, I've had half of this thing already. Maybe I should stop while I'm just a little bit behind. <laughs> uh, that square guy says, sorry, Rick, I would be chatting more, but I'm running around like a headless uh, chook right now. You're on the TV, though. No, I appreciate it. Oh, wow, I'm on TV. I'm famous. Huh? No, I'm just kidding. I, um, I've been on TV before, actually. Not a big deal, but uh, I appreciate it. I'm on TV. Uh, <laughs> that sounds great. That square guy says, ha ha. Look, uh, I don't think there's much going on on, on uh, Facebook tonight. And I, I have I have, I have an idea of what uh, some of what might be going on. A lot of people are, are uh, I, think there, I think some people are probably uh, – <laughs> drink with Rick out <laughs> for the week. I'm not surprised because I am a little bit too. We're probably going to keep this one a little bit short tonight, folks. I do want to uh, go right into the birthdays, though, because we have some birthdays to celebrate. The first birthday I want to celebrate is for my good friend Jody, Jody Krangle. And Jody has, uh, she is a voiceover uh, artist and a very a voiceover professional. Been doing it for years. I did toast her last week on the stream, but I want to toast her again because her birthday was actually uh, on the first 
So, uh, you know, it's pretty close to the end of the week here. Um, it was on Thursday, so I want to toast her again. Anyway, so to Jody, here are the fireworks again. Here's to you, to my good friend Jody Krangel. Happy birthday. And that's for my good friend Jody. Uh, I, I do want to make another birthday toast to, uh, I want to, well, a birthday toast, I want to say. I want to make a birthday toast to my... Uh, my friend Barbara. Um, Barbara is the 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 wife, um, uh, the, the the widow of uh, my uh, mentor, one of my mentors, and someone that I considered a father like figure when I worked at WOFL in Orlando. He was the general manager of Channel Thirty Five, uh, Norris Richel, who passed away uh, a couple of years ago, and it was. Uh, I was really, really shocked and sad to hear that. And uh, Norris, I, I admire, I always admired Nor Norris very much. And I did kind of give him a, 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 a kind of a memorial here on the show um, last year. But I, I wanted to say to Barbara, happy birthday, because it is Barbara's birthday coming up on Monday, uh, uh, on the 5th. And I want to say I remember you. I've never forgotten you, never forgotten you or Norris and your kindness. And uh, over the years uh, when we worked at WFL, haven't really seen you for, for a long time. But uh, I think about you and Norris. I think about all my friends at uh, Channel 35. And I want to say happy birthday to you. And I hope you're doing very, very well. This is to my, um, my friend Barbara Richel. Happy birthday. Uh, another, uh, well, we have several birthdays coming up on Monday. And another person who has a birthday coming up is my friend Tom. Tom Bozeman. Tom, um, he, um, he uh, ran PCSOS. It was way, way back when I was doing uh, contract work in my IT business. And I ran a number of calls for him. He would send me some work orders, and I would uh, run those calls for him. And uh, Tom uh, was a part of the force field, and we, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to to have Tom on the show on the force field podcast. Didn't get around to doing it, but uh, uh, before I, I ended the show, but I always wanted to have him on there. But uh, really, really nice guy, and uh, I want to say Tom's birthday is coming up on Monday, also on the fifth. And Tom, if you're around, I want to say happy, happy birthday to you. I hope you and your family are doing very well. And may you have many, many, many more birthdays. Here's to Tom. Happy birthday. Here's to Tom Bozeman. Now, another friend of mine, uh, another WOFL alumni, uh, alumnus, as a matter of fact, my good friend Pete, Pete Ramondetta. Pete and I go way, way back to Channel 35 as well. And he uh, worked in engineering at the time uh, that I was there. Did a little production work there, but worked in engineering a lot and uh, was one of the honor switchers and uh, did a fine job, very dedicated to his job. And just a, a, a ni really nice guy, a great guy to be around. We had many, many conversations uh, over, uh, you know, over the years when we worked there. Uh, just uh, enjoyed always enjoyed uh, talking to him and, and, and hanging around. Uh, with those guys, and uh, it was just uh, just a great time that we had. I mean, we were more like family there anyway. But uh, Pete has been doing some real estate. He's been uh, doing real estate some, and I think he's just recently got back into doing a little freelance production work. And I think that's really good because I know that's something that he likes, and he's been doing um, he's been doing a job or two here and there. So, uh, Pete, I want to say uh, here's your continued success with both. And I want to say, Pete... Happy birthday to you. Your birthday is Monday uh, on the 5th. Happy birthday to Pete. And you know what? I'll toast you again just because I can. Here's to Pete Ramondetta. Happy birthday. And may you have many, many more. And that's my good friend Pete. Now, someone else that I want to uh, toast a birthday for is... Um, my cousin, now I'm not sure if this is Sherrod or Kathy's birthday, because uh, Sherrod's, uh, uh, Sherrod's on Facebook, and I, I saw that his birthday was coming up this coming Friday, or is it my cousin Kathy's birthday this Friday? I'm not 100% sure if it's Sherrod's or Kathy's, because they both use the same account. So uh, either way, I want to say 
happy birthday to you. It's Sherrod or Kathy. I think it's Sherrod's birthday, right? It's uh, on, the, on Friday the 9th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, I have one more. Uh, there's one more uh, that I want to toast. And this is an anniversary. This is a, a special anniversary toast to my good friend Todd, Todd Cochran. Now, I've mentioned Todd many times in the show. Uh, Todd's been a podcaster for many, many years, longer than I have, actually. And he is uh, he's the CEO of Raw Voice and uh, Blueberry.com, which uh, does hosting. Uh, they, they offer podcast hosting services, but much, much more than that, production service, post-production service, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they, do, uh, they, they offer a lot of different uh, services and products for podcasters. Um, and he also uh, started the Tech Podcast Network, which the force field, the, the podcast I was on, that's how I met Todd, was uh, Forcefield was a member of the Tech Podcast Network back in the day, and Tommy's show Cube Command is is on the Tech Podcast Network as well. Uh, he's a proud member of the te of Tech Podcast, also Blueberry, and um, Tommy hosts with, with Blueberry as well. Uh, Todd also uh, he does his Geek News Central show, and he's been doing that for 16 years. Tomorrow, tomorrow, which is 10:4. October 4th, uh, Sunday, is Todd's 16-year anniversary as a podcaster. And he is definitely one of the OGs, one of the old guard podcasters. They also, Todd and um, uh, Rob Greenlee also do the New Media Show. And I mentioned both of them and the New Media Show many times past. Uh, the New Media Show, uh, which uh, covers pretty much all everything about podcasting and podcasters and streaming, that sort of thing. But... Um, Todd's been doing his Geek News Central show for 16 years, and I've and I've listened to a lot of them over the 16 years. Oh, he's done well over a thousand shows, uh, so uh, he's uh, he's definitely put in his his uh, time as a podcaster. Anyway, Todd, here's to you, my good friend. Here's to you. Happy 16th anniversary podcasting, and I'll toast you again too. Happy anniversary, Todd. Happy anniversary. So let's see uh, anything else we got going in the chat here. Oh, sure, uh, in the chat. Where is that, Kathy? Could be Sherrod and Kathy. Says, uh, Sherrod, thanks for the birthday toast. You're quite welcome. You know what? I'll toast you one more time here. Sherrod, happy birthday. And uh, let's see what we got going here. Uh, oh, yes, uh, we have a couple of national a few national days that I'm going to cover real quick. And, of course, uh, I pick up the national days from nationaldaycalendar.com. This is uh, my good friend uh, Marlo Anderson's site, and they cover all the national days. Uh, I'm going to go through these quickly because I'm going to try to uh, end the show uh, not too late here tonight. But uh, October 3rd, that's today, is National Techies Day. I was a techie myself. Here's a National Techies Day. I'll drink to that. National Techies Day. National Boyfriend Day. Uh, I was a boyfriend to my wife until I married her. Now I'm her husband. I think I'm still her boyfriend. <laughs> National Boyfriend Day. Tomorrow is October 4th. And October 4th is National Cinnamon, uh, National Cinnamon Bun Day. Okay, I have to drink to that, right? Okay, National Cinnamon, I love cinnamon buns. I'm not supposed to be eating them. I'm not supposed to be eating cinnamon buns, but I really do love them. Gee, maybe we can have some cinnamon buns tomorrow for breakfast, huh? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, here's the National Cinnamon Bun Day. National Taco Day is also tomorrow. Tomorrow's National Taco Day. Wow, you could have a cinnamon bun for breakfast and a tacos for lunch or dinner. National Taco Day. I love tacos. I can't eat the hard ones anymore. I'm not supposed to be eating uh, the really hard corn products. Uh, but, but I can't eat the soft tacos. Uh, so here's a National Taco Day. National Golf Lovers Day. There you go. For all of you who are golf lovers, I'll drink to that. I played a little, a little, I've whacked the ball around a few times in my day. I have a set of golf clubs right over there that's gathering dust across the studio. It's been sitting there for the longest time gathering dust. 
My son, when he was young, he wanted to be the next Tiger Woods, so he he took golf lessons and he did a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, playing playing around uh, with golf when he was younger. He kind of outgrew that, but uh, uh, and he outgrew his clubs too because he had the little kids kid size. I mean, they were professional clubs, but they were for the uh, uh, they, they were the small size to fit him. But um, we had a we had a lot of time uh, we had a lot of good times going around and we're actually going we're planning to go out miniature golfing tomorrow I think we're going to do that and do a little miniature golf tomorrow with some friends of his so uh, here's a National Golf Lovers Day tomorrow is also National Vodka Day you like vodka I like I like a uh, yeah I like vodka sometimes not supposed to be drinking that either but you know I like vodka. Tomorrow is World Smile Day. World Smile Day. Yes, tomorrow is World Smile Day. We should all smile more, especially these days. There's not a lot to smile about these days, but we should all be smiling as much as possible. Here's to World Smile Day. Okay. Oh, no, that's a little creepy, isn't it? Okay. There, there's a more genuine, that's a genuine smile right there. Here's to World Smile Day. And um, tomorrow is also National GOE Day. That's the first Sunday of the first full weekend. I had to go look this up because I didn't know what National GOE Day is. And apparently, and I'm reading this from uh, nationaldaycalendar.com, National GOE Day is, uh, GOE stands for Growth, Overcome, Empower. The Sunday of the first full weekend in October encourages us to support safe spaces for healing and connection for those who have been victimized by abuse and trauma. The day focuses on healing, recovery, and providing resources that support overcoming these overwhelming obstacles of life. And uh, that's what that is, National G-O-E Day. That's uh, growth, that's growth, overcome, and power, empower, empower. So it's National G-O-E Day. And then more or less empties my glass. There is one more day I want to, uh, Real quick, just real briefly, that I want to, uh, oh, cheese, cheese in the chat, she says, sure, I'll help you cook. Okay, you'll help me cook, uh, we'll, we'll make some cinnamon buns together in the morning. I love cooking with Chi in the morning. Um, I, you know, in the, in the morning having breakfast or something, and we both get in the, the, uh, in the kitchen together and, and cook together. It's, it's always fun, and I enjoy that. And it's kind of relaxing in a way. It's just, it's, it's really, it's really fun. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, let's do some, some cinnamon buns. I, I know we have some, uh, something in the fridge to, to make cinnamon buns, right? I mean, we can do that. All right, so tomorrow, one more day tomorrow. Tomorrow is, and I mentioned this earlier for Todd. Todd, Todd, did you know, if you're watching later, uh, I don't know if you're watching now, but if you're watching later, did you know that tomorrow, aside from being your 16th, anniversary as a podcaster did you know that tomorrow is also cb radio day national cb radio day of course 10 4 day get it 10 4 10 4 good buddy yeah 10 4 day that's a big 10 4 good buddy you know yes it is for sure this is not a joke um in uh i think it was 1974 um uh, the president at the time president uh Carter, Jimmy Carter, signed uh, an official proclamation to make the 4th of October National 10-4 Day. Now, if you remember 1974, CB was a big deal. I mean, it had become a really big fad. And, and movies like, uh, who was it, uh, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, that, I think that was one that really brought CBs out because CB uh, was really, really featured in that film quite a bit so the success of smoking the bandit which became a huge hit then you know if you remember that with burton reynolds and sally field they um cbs really uh, people all of a sudden wanted to get into cb radio and there were other films uh, that uh, after that a lot of copycat films that, that you see uh that, that like to cash in on that success when they see a fad coming you know when hollywood sees a fad coming on a film they say oh well, we're gonna make all these films on the same genre so you had all these things like convoy that came out and a lot of other a lot of other um, uh, mostly forgettable trucker films and of course they had, i think smoking the man they had like two or three more sequels too anyway um cb radio became really really popular in the united states and uh now at the time at the time 
This is a very interesting story. See, I'm getting off on a tangent now. At the time, CB radio, you had to have a license to use a CB radio. And um, people started getting these CBs all the time. They weren't getting the licenses. They were just getting on the air. And the FCC at the time at first tried to rein that in to try to get some control back over it uh, for the licensing. Then they realized it was a lost cause because so many people were just getting on the air, not bothering to get the licenses. And, and, get the, and, the, and the, CCC, uh, the FCC, excuse me, the FCC is a small agency and can't, just can't go around busting everybody for, for, for uh, uh, breaking the, 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 the rules there and breaking the law. So what they wound up doing is they wound up eliminating the licensing requirement so there is a license that re today there isn't a license that is required for cb but it is licensed by rule that's called license by rule that's when you just by the act of purchasing a cb radio that automatically gives you a license to use the cb so that's what what's called license by rule and because of that you don't really need to go get a license. You don't have to go buy a license from the FCC. You don't have to sign up for a license from the FCC, from the FCC to use CB radio. You can just buy a CB radio and use it essentially license-free because just buying that radio gives you the license to use it over the, the 40 CB channels. So that is, um, that you know, CB isn't as popular now as it used to be. But it, uh, it, but a lot of people still use it. A lot of truckers still use them. Uh, a lot of a lot of people still use CB for various reasons, and uh, so it, they're still sell. We sell CB radios, just to let you know. We sell CB radios at buy2wearradios.com. Uh, of course, if you're interested in CB radio or FRS or GMRS radios or weather radios, I'm telling everybody always get a weather radio. Uh, you can go to buy2wearradios.com. And uh, if you go there, buy a CB radio or FRS, GMRS radio, marine radio, airband radio, business radios, whatever kind of radio you want to buy, ham radios, of course. If you use the promo code show, uh, wine show, excuse me, if you use the promo code wine show, that's W I N E S H O W, W I N E S H O W. If you use the promo code wine show at checkout, you can save 5% off your order, an additional 5% off your order. And uh, that will get you, and that that's good for anything on uh, on the site. And, and anything you want to buy on the site, a uh, wine show um, will get you five percent off uh, on your your total at uh, buy2wearradios.com. Now, having said that, I am for full disclosure, I am the product manager for buy 2 Wear radios. I don't make any extra doing this. This is not really a paid endorsement. Uh, you know, my boss just gave me the promo code and said, hey, just give this, you know, he just gave me a promo code to use for, you know, that all my, my viewers and listeners of Drink With Rick can use. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're not making any more on that. In fact, we're making 5% less, you know, because we're giving away the promo code. So I'm not making anything on this, okay? I'm not. Uh, it's not a paid endorsement. And I'll tell you if it was. If it ever comes to where they're at, where, uh, the, the company actually decides to to sponsor the show, and I don't know that ever that's ever going to happen. But if they did, then I would certainly tell you. Just for, and and as a matter of fact, if anyone if if I do get any paid endorsements or if I do pick up a sponsor, I'm always going to tell you. I'm going to be straight up front with you and tell you that it's a paid uh, sponsorship or a paid endorsement. I'm not going to hide that from you. It's full disclosure. Uh, not just because I'm required to by the FTC, but because it's the right thing to do. So just to let you know about that. Anyway, so let's go back to the chats for, uh, for a minute. Uh, let's check Twitch. Nothing much going on, on Facebook tonight. Um, that Square guy says, uh, "Oh, uh, okay." That, that, <laughs> I'm up. To, I'm up to date on the chat there. Nothing going on on Twitter. It looks um, okay. Troy needs a haircut, like my tweet. Okay, thanks, Troy. And. Uh, Nothing going on on YouTube, and it's it is it is pretty quiet on uh, it is pretty quiet on Facebook tonight. Unusual, unusual. Maybe everybody will catch it on the on uh, VOD, video on demand. So uh, anyway, that's not quite all I have. I've, I'm almost uh, I've, I've got most uh, everything covered that I wanted to cover. But uh, oh, I almost forgot. Yes, I've got to do this right. Okay, let's uh, 
let's let's do uh, yeah yes i did almost for i i did almost forget this okay <laughs> Because I got into it, it was one of the national, it was not technically, it is one of the national days. It's just not on the nationaldaycalendar.com. So I wanted to say happy CB Radio Day for all of you CBers and all those who want to be CBers, uh, all those uh, uh, aspiring CBers. Here's to happy CB Radio Day, 10 4 day. I will drink to that. I will drink to that. Anyway, so that, that covers. That covers the national days. I did get off on a tangent, didn't I? This is what we're drinking tonight, just to let everyone know. If you're just uh, tuning in, this is uh, what we're drinking. It's a black box premium wine. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile, 2019. 500 milliliters is the three 5.6 ounce servings, which uh, is equated to about three glasses of wine. And uh, from what I've seen here, it is... 13% alcohol by volume. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's, it seems a little watered down to me, but I guess that's uh, I guess that's the wine. I don't know. It's okay. It, it's okay. I don't know that I would drink this regularly. It's it's. Uh, I'll give you my final review in, in, in a little bit. But first, I promised that I was going to show you a cupcake video, and I will. This is a cupcake cooking video. Uh, as you know, my son Tommy had his uh, birthday on the 29th and we opened up three bottles of wine and on the 30th we opened up three beers and he tried each of those and he talked about his cube command podcast of course and uh, as a matter of fact i'm going to in fact uh, just to let you know oops that's the wrong one here <laughs> i gotta find the right uh, button here all right where is it there it is cube command podcast on the savoy media network I had another picture here somewhere, but I can't remember where I put it. Uh, maybe it's up here. There it is. Okay. Cube Command. Um, this is website, cubecommand.com. I We did a crossover for uh, International Podcast Day. We did a crossover. He did two episodes uh, here on Drink with Rick during the week, and then I did a special episode with him as a guest on his podcast talking about the history of sci-fi. And uh, this is episode 70 of the Cube Command podcast. If you get a chance, go ahead and give it a listen. So far, he's had a lot of listens to this. A lot of people have been listening to it. It turns out, uh, I guess this was a pretty popular episode. But this is his latest episode. So, And you know what? I haven't even heard it yet. I was on it, and I haven't even heard it yet. Uh, I've got to go give it a listen. I've been uh, listening to a lot, trying to catch up with a lot of podcasts that I've missed over the last week. I was listening to uh, the last episode of Selling Sarasota and... Uh, I, I was trying to catch up on uh, Crushing Debt podcast, uh, the, the podcast that I listen to a, a lot of, um, a new media show and, and things like that. And also um, Stephanie Lee's podcast, and my good friend uh, Stephanie, she does a podcast uh, called uh, Growing Uncomfortable, which is a really, really fine. If you have not heard this podcast, got to go check it out, Growing Uncomfortable. She did a great episode this past week. Um, on, um, well, you should go listen to it. I think it's relevant for everybody, especially from this past week. And I don't want to go into a rant on that because uh, we don't talk about politics and religion on this show. But I will say that this last week has very, been very tumultuous, especially in the social media space. I, I just think everybody needs just to be, needs to be a little nicer to each other. That's all. Be excellent to each other. You know what? My sister Penny posted something and, um, this was the night after, you know, a, a, a lot of the news broke about COVID uh, and certain people having COVID. And um, she posted something, I think it was early this morning, and she posted a, uh, what was it? It was a, it was a GIF or GIF um, from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And if you know, I, I've quoted Bill and Ted many times in this show, be excellent to each other, because I do believe that. And she did post something about that and, and saying, you know, uh, we really need to be more more excellent to each other. What's happened to that? You know, really, what, what's, what's happened to that? And I, I, I agree. I mean, it seems like people are not being excellent to each other, especially on sp social media these days. They're being pretty, some people are being very, very nasty almost. And it's, it's, it, it, it bothers me a lot. It, it's very disconcerting. And um, it's just, it's not just disappointing. It's it's really it's really it, it's coming from both sides, from all sides. No, I mean everybody's to blame for this. 
there are no there are no good guys here. Everybody's being to blame for for just the the general overall nastiness and 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 uh, and just meanness and and uh, you know just just bad form all the way around. And and I it it it's it's disturbing. It's really disturbing. I, I've never seen any of that before. And I, I just know, I wonder if we're just reaching a breaking point here. Just people just need to be, just chill out, calm down, just be nicer to each other. That's all. And, and that's what the show is about. That's one of the reasons why I still do the show. It's still fun. I like to do it. And when I told you before, when it stops being fun, I'll stop doing it. But I think it's also very important that we try to do things that bring people together. And you know what? As it has been quoted by so many other people, wine does bring people together. And that's what we do here on this show. Bring people together with wine. Common denominator. You can put your all your differences aside and let's get together and just have some wine. Just sit back and chat and have a great time. That's what this show's about. Please, please, chill out, sit back, relax, open up a bottle of your favorite beverage. And it doesn't have to be wine. We had beer the other night. Whatever your favorite beverage is, just sit back, relax, chill out, be cool, and let's just talk about things. Talk about things and civilly, you know, as human beings, as adults, as human beings. Um, and that's our commonality. We all live on planet Earth. We're all together on the same, the same blue ball. And uh, we, we, need, we just need to, to get along together and, and just learn that civil discourse is, is a much better way to go. Uh, that's what gets things done. Civil discourse gets things done. Um, not fighting and, 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 and arguing and, and, and spewing hate and whatever back and forth. And, and I'm telling you, it comes from all sides. I'm not being political here. I'm looking at the socio-moral um, uh, norms here, and we're just not in any kind of, of norm. Is socio-moral? I don't know. That, that, that's even a word, but I, I just made it up. So that's my word. <laughs> You're welcome to it, but that's my word. Um, anyway, enough of that. That is my rant for the night. I'm all for what my sister Penny said. Follow uh, Bill and Ted's advice. Be excellent to each other, please. We need it. We need it, especially right now. Okay, so I promised I'd show this. I promised Tommy because uh, when we did the beer, uh, the uh, special episode of Drink with Rick, episode 80, with the beer episode, where my son tried the beers, I told him, I promised him that I would show this. They, they did, we were talking about the cooking video that he and his friend Nick did. I'm going to show it tonight. I'm going to show it right now. This is, a, it's about 10 minutes long, but I will be in the chat with everybody, so you can chat with me while you're watching. It's fine, because I'll be freed up to be able to chat um, on the uh, on the keyboard. And when that's done, we'll uh, give a final review and wrap things up to, for the night. How's, how's that uh, for everyone. Anyway, without any further ado, here is the uh, cooking video. This is Tom and Nick bake some cupcakes from cubecommand.com. Yeah, let's get a spin on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to be making, uh, we're making some cupcakes. Some uh, Reese's pieces, 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 Reese's pieces. You already know. Reese's pieces cupcakes. Okay, and we have a mixer. Where's the bowl? The bowl's right here. Oh, thank you. Relax. Is that is that butter? Butter. I mean, a knife. Yeah, I need a knife. Or oh, you just rip it with a hand. Watching. Ooh. Here, use this one. This one's the best one for butter. What is that? What are you doing? Why is there already a stick of butter in here? How many do we need? One and a half. One and a half? One and a half. So greasy. He is really grinding butter. Oh. Wow. This works. Oh Surprise. my gosh. Oh, Tommy here. You're nasty. It's like stuck on the sides. He just cut it. He used some scissors to cut some butter. Uh, this is so unsanitary. <laughs> la -da -da, yeah, la -da -da. <laughs> <gasps> you didn't see nothing. 
Look at that. We're already the first step there. It only took us five minutes. All right. Let me tell you, this is how you beat some butter. Oh, I forgot to plug it in. I thought it fell out. Take two. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. So we finally got the butter in. Uh, next step, we are adding one and a half cups of sugar. So we're need that, that is not a half. That is half. You don't even fill them up. What Look is at that? that. Look at that edge. You know what? You're gonna unsweeten uh, cupcakes. Okay. There, there go. you go. There you go. That's that's clean. <laughs> I would eat this. Ew. It's all chunky. You hear me? Do you want to? Kind of do. My hands are clean. Yeah, nice job having a watch while you're baking. <laughs> His face. Yeah, it wasn't worth it, was it? That's so much butter. Looks like you learned something new today. Yeah, who's better cracking eggs, you or me? Uh, I would say me. You will do it? I'm right, the experienced egg cracker. It's right here, right here. Bada ooh. bing, bada bang. Ooh. Bada ooh. What? What'd you do? Wow. Alright, take two. Bada bing. Then I'll extract. Oh, it smells like. That's not smelling. <coughs> Two teaspoons. Ew, it looks like medicine too. Ew. Baking powder. One. Two. Salt. I'm open. I'm open. Touch it. We are looking at um. One fourth a teaspoon of salt. Now you gotta be easy with this. Flour. This Not, that flour. flour. Not that flour. Not that flour. I'm gonna ride up. No. Uh, one okay. one fourth cups of milk. So the whole thing, all right. Come on, dude. Let's just, just get the milk okay. in, Sean. Real quick, real quick, come on. <laughs> oh my god. Where's that smell? I need a spoon. You look like a spoon. Thank you. Wait a yeah. second. Is that a good thing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it means I have a really skinny body and a huge head. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do this old school just for the heck of it. <laughs> it looks like a drumstick. Oh man, how would you like your drumstick, sir? Uh -oh. With or without the metal? I got it. You see, uh, old Nelly's at work here. Right here. Got old Nelly working. Working real hard. She, uh, Alright, so next step we are done mixing everything, so now we actually just pour them into spiral uh, pens. Whoa! That looks good. Yep. Wait, I saw some chunks in there. It's your imagination. I have no imagination. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like old, old people food. What kind of old people are you watching? <laughs> I, need, I need something. I'm curved. Spoon. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Dang. Mm. Mm. Who are you feeding? Myself. <laughs> Me, myself, and I. That's romantic. Thank you. Why is it all soupy? What do you mean, why is it all soupy? You put so much canola oil in there. Yeah, what do you mean it's so soupy? <laughs> look at this. This thing is so... It'll look how much oil olive oil you put. It'll put it'll bake. Can we go on record saying that was not me that put all the olive oil in there? <laughs> that was him? Man, this thing is sticking. I need something like... Like a spatula. 
Ja, da 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 Oh. <laughs> that sound expected. <laughs> you know, you know what's next? Oh, okay. You know what's next, Tommy? What? You know what's next? I don't think, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready. Ooh. Yeah, da 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 You can put more power here. Reese's. And now for the crowning moment, the uh, part we've all been waiting for. Oh, this one starts together, nice. Who's gonna get the good one? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Skills. All right. Here they go. Here they go. And we're just gonna set it for 25 minutes. All right. Most important part is uh, cleaning up all this. Yeah. Hey, Cosmo, you want to bake? You want to bake? I mean, I don't have to touch the tray. I just put these right in front of me. He wants to bake. They're doing pretty good. Um, this one right here is perfect because he swirled it. Uh, he decided not to do that for the rest of these. That's why this well, one in particular looks. This one in particular looks really, really pathetic. Oh, it's not recording. No, I'm, I'm, jo I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. It's gonna say. Yeah, da, da, da. There we go. Them boys, hot. Them hot. That's why I got these uh, these little these little mittens. Feeling now, Mr. Krabs. Is that, ooh. I am feeling this, Mr. Krabs. Let me tell you. Mmm. Scrumpty Leonches. Let's uh, let's do a little poke test. Okay, we got a lot of chocolate in there. Ooh, chocolate that's is good. melted. That's a really, that's a perfectly. Ooh, that was so shit. Yeah, no, it's kind of kind of busted in the top, but uh, everything else about it's pretty good. It's it's what's on the inside that matters, Tommy. It's what not about it? it's not about the outside. It's what's inside. I really just want to eat one right now. Don't we all? I'm just gonna take one. I'm just gonna take. Don't take one. I'm just gonna take it. Don't take one. Like Nick, I will put this icing in your. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it. Oh wow 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 wow. All right, and I think we're good. Look at that. Look at that, it just, it just it keeps getting better the farther down the line you go. It's edible. Well, that's good. No, it's really good. Why would you do that? Whoops. <laughs> he just dropped a napkin all over <laughs> you. <laughs> you listen here. <laughs> Sorry, you think that's okay? We didn't just bake this for like half an hour just for you to mess it up. <laughs> Did this have the Reese's pieces in the middle? Or yeah, they got some inside top? and on the top. You can see uh, we really took some artistic design. Come on, when, uh, take a bigger bite. I have a small mouth. <laughs> we, we took some artistic design with the, um, the icing. Yeah, very artistic design. Only the finest jokes here at Cube Command. Where do Command. I put these? Whoa. There we go. Thank you for watching our tutorial video on how to make cupcakes. We definitely didn't do this the first we time. We're very experienced. Okay. Those are good. Yeah. I do give it a 10 out of 10, surprisingly. After we cooked, I didn't think, you know. 10 out of 10? That low? 10 out of 10. What are you 11 doing? out of 10. What? 12 out of 10. 13, 20, 30, 50. The sky's the limit, you know? You just keep going up. I mean, is it really a limit? No, there is no limit. Not when uh, our baking skills are this good. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I had a little issue at the very beginning with the frame rate. The frame rate was was kind of off, so I had to adjust that on the fly while we were while we were showing that video. I need I definitely need to get a new computer. I need a new PC for streaming, and uh, this one's just too old. I'm just hobbling along. I'm just getting by with it. Uh, as soon as I afford one, <laughs> which who knows when that'll be, especially with my wine habit. And, uh, of course, I've got a couple other projects going on that, uh, are, that have kind of tied up whatever, whatever uh, savings I have left to, to uh, 
utilized for that. But anyway, so that is uh, Tommy and Nick's cupcake video. You can actually catch it in, in full HD and without all the jerkiness on cubecommand.com. That's www.cubecommand.com. Of course, you can find all of our shows at Savoya Media, uh, Drink with Rick, Cube Command, for the Free Stuff Show, all of those at Cube Command. Oh, excuse me, at Savoya Media. Dot com. All right, well, um, she says, uh, I hope they didn't throw away my baking stuff. I, well, I hope not, too. You'll have to take that up with her son. <laughs> You'll have to take that up with him. All right, well, I guess that does it for our show tonight. I hope you had a great time. I hope you had uh, as much fun uh, being here watching as I did uh, putting it together and, and presenting it. The final review on the wine. What we were drinking was we were drinking this black box Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. It's a 2019. It is uh, just about empty too, and it, uh, it wasn't really that much to the wine to be honest. The, I'll tell you about my final review on it. It's supposed to be full bodied, but I didn't find it all that full bodied. It seemed a little weak to me. I mean, it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But for cab, and I've had cabs that were really, in fact, we had one a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago that was uh, a little bit, really full body and a little bit, a uh, little bit strong. But this one is really not, at least not the one that I had. Now, maybe the three liter one is, but this one, uh, not so much, not so much. Supposedly it has a gold medal, best buy, uh, what is that? Best buys, uh, 34 best buys. Okay, whatever. Uh, anyway, I'll say I tasted the cherry. I tasted some blackberry in it. Um, they say it, uh, there's some oak in it. But I didn't taste a whole lot of oak. I tasted, it seemed a little watery to me, actually. Uh, the uh, Maybe it was just this one. Maybe, maybe somebody opened it and drank some out of it and then filled it back up with water. I don't know. I really don't. I don't think so. I think it seemed to snap when I opened it, but who knows? The supermarket, who knows anymore? Uh, it's just stuff like that happens. You know, people open stuff up and take a swig and then close it up. If, it, if that was the case, and well, of course it was in the, the clearance. I say I shouldn't have gotten it from the clearance cart. But if it was in the clearance cart, it definitely shouldn't have been there if it had been open. If it had been open, it should not have been in the clearance cart. I'll have to take that up with, uh, with the supermarket there. Of course, if, um, if, if something happens and I don't wake up in the morning, uh, well, you'll know what happened. <laughs> Pretty sure what happened. Anyway, uh, was not impressed with it. It, it. it seemed a little weak to me, and it seemed 13% uh, alcohol by volume, maybe. Uh, but, it uh, you know, I did taste the, the, the berries in it, and I did taste a, a little hint of vanilla, a li just a little bit. But uh, and a few mild tannins. It didn't seem all that tannic, and it was definitely not bold. It was definitely not a bold wine, and uh, I didn't. It, supposedly there's a lingering finish to it, but uh, I didn't really get that, and I still don't. It doesn't seem like a very lingering finish. It it goes down. There is a little bit of finish to it, but it, like I said, it's kind of weak. Anyway. That's my final review on this wine. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I hope you enjoyed the, the show, uh, the wine. I don't know. I, I don't know that I can really recommend the wine. It's uh, Some people like it. Some people really seem to like it. Me, uh, I, maybe I should try another box wine sometime just to get a fair, give it, you know, a fair shake as far as box wines con are concerned, but uh, I was not overly impressed with this one, I'll be honest. I was not overly impressed with it. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me in the chat tonight. I want to thank Sherrod, and happy birthday again, Sherrod, my lovely wife, Chi, uh, everyone in uh, Twitch that joined me, that square guy, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate you, and uh, Tom Antio, and uh, who else joined me on? Uh, nobody, nobody joined me on on YouTube tonight. It was kind of kind of quiet tonight. Unusual, unusually quiet tonight. I think everyone's had uh, their fill of me for the week because <laughs> we've done four. Look, we've done since Saturday night. 
and then uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday night, and then, of course, Saturday night again. So we've done three or four streams for the week, and I think everybody's kind of drink with bricked out for the week, <laughs> probably. But, look, I want to thank you. I think I want to thank you if you have stuck it out this far. Thank you for being here with me tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, next week, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe we'll open up that one. If so, if I if I survive the week uh, after drinking this thing, I don't know what was in here. Um, please, please do not drink and drive. Please do not drink and drive. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your dwelling, whatever it is. Uh, your hotel room, whatever, call an Uber, call a Lyft, call, call a cab, call, you know, have somebody else, can have a designated driver. D don't drink and drive, please. Do not text and drive. That is definitely a pet peeve of mine. Do not text and drive because I want everyone to have a great week and I want you to have a safe week. So you can join me here next week on the Saturday night wine stream and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.